good morning to everyone. Let me invite you in to uh, grab a seat. There are a number of chairs over here, a number of chairs over here, or invite you to find a wonderful place to stand. <clears throat> Lydia Linker, who came from the governor's office to join uh, the Andrews Institute, uh, helps me understand that in a political moment you never want empty chairs. Uh, and so she's done a great job of setting this up perfectly this morning uh, with the chairs filled and standing uh, room around it. Uh, we welcome you to Lipscomb University and welcome you to this very, very special day as we uh, once again think about uh, Nelson and Sue Andrews and their legacy and their work in Nashville and see how that will continue uh, with this wonderful, wonderful institute. I've had the occasion this morning to meet several of you that are interested in being a part of our first master's degree class. And as I've said to you, and would say to everyone else, uh, there's only one inaugural class. Uh, this program will happen year after year after year, but there will never be another inaugural class. And we certainly invite you or people you know that are interested in civic leadership and an unparalleled experience in that through this program uh, to be a part of it. We also uh, find it interesting today to invite you to this campus. Uh, you won't see this, but uh, Girls State is meeting at Lipscomb. Uh, used to meet at uh, Middle Tennessee State University. They came here last year and then decided to come here permanently. 550 young women uh, from 94 counties I get throughout the state. Uh, and they're here for a week of experiences that they will never forget. Uh, the governor was here a couple of days ago to greet them. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it bothered Governor Bredesen a little bit last year uh, that he was greeting Girls State uh, at a private university. Uh, I let him know it didn't bother me at all. Uh, we welcome him and uh, we welcome that group uh, as uh, leadership is taking place really among us uh, for generations to come because of that program. Uh, we also uh, want to say as we begin today uh, how appreciative we are of, of all of your support. Uh, as we begin this journey, and it began with Nelson and me a number of years ago in conversation, as we begin this journey, uh, we also recognize that the YMCA is recognizing uh, the Andrews family, and we have been very careful uh, to be supportive of the effort that they are making to build a wonderful facility uh, that will honor the Andrews family. Uh, we want to be supportive of that and frankly have uh, done no fundraising at all for the Andrews Institute. Uh, because we want to get that project done first and then we'll do some things here. So what you will see today uh, is something that really has been supported by this university and we anticipate a wonderful partnership with the YMCA uh, as they build a different kind of facility and we put together what we think will be a nationally recognized academic program and to share with each other then in the growth of civic leadership in this community. I want to uh, introduce several people, but I won't spend much time doing that. We want to have several uh, comments made, and in just a moment, uh, our mayor will speak, and in uh, respect to the mayor and his schedule, uh, we're gonna get there, so uh, he has time to do that. But let me just share this one story as, as we get started. Uh, I was thinking about uh, Nelson Andrews in particular, and thinking about our city and how blessed we are, and the, the vision that came to mind very, very quickly uh, was the vision from my favorite play that I hope to see uh, in London a little bit later this year, uh, Les Mis. Uh, and as you, uh, uh, that's not Les Mis at all. Why did I say Les Mis? Uh, that is my favorite play. This is a different one, though. Uh, maybe I can put the two together. We had a new play there. But, uh, the thought that came to my mind was the, uh, the moment uh, from The Man of La Mancha. Uh, you remember that one? Uh, where uh, you have the, this uh, guy, Don Quixote, who's absolutely crazy uh, and, and sees the world a little differently than anybody else sees it and goes about trying to walk out a life that nobody else really understands. Uh, and the play comes down to some really uh, compelling moments when he meets in, in what we would call a bar or a tavern uh, a woman by the name of Aldonza. Remember Aldonza? And she was pretty obviously a waitress by day and a prostitute by night. And yet the man of La Mancha, Don Quixote, saw in her something that I think she didn't even see in herself. 
And so you have this wonderful dialogue as he uh, ever so gently is connecting with her, but finally gets to the point of doing something that really uh, was pretty offensive. Uh, he decided to give her a new name. And you recall that the new name was Dalsinea. And he would say, you know, you're not Aldonza, you are Dalsinea, and you are my lady. And she got very, very irritated at one point. Uh, and at one point she screams back to him and says, don't you understand what I am? I'm nothing but a kitchen slut. And he says, no. No, your name is Dalsinea, and you are my lady. Well, you take that moment, and then you go forward to the end of the play, and the curtains open up for the last time, and there are the men of La Mancha, very, very old, very frail, very feeble. Uh, you see him laying there at the end of his life, obviously. And uh, as uh, he's there, uh, the lights come up, and this beautiful woman walks in from one side of the stage and walks up near him and leans down. And he knows someone's there. He opens his feverish eyes and turns his head and says with that frail voice, who is it? And she says, it is I, Dulcinea, and I am your lady. And what comes through to me in that story is a sense of vision. And if there's something that, that Nelson and Sue Andrews have had for this community, it is a sense of vision. Uh, whether it's our relationship to each other across ethnic lines, or it's what a city could actually accomplish, or it's how children read in the third grade in our schools, <coughs> wherever it was placed, uh, there was a sense of vision that then brought about this wonderful work. Uh, that is the legacy on which we build. Uh, that is uh, the legacy that's been given to us. And that's the legacy that's certainly in front of us as we move forward with this program. Let me. Uh, uh, introduce to you uh, our mayor who will bring comments and then Sue Andrews who will bring comments then we will have a ribbon cutting uh, in the most uh, ceremonial of ways uh, and uh, then we will have uh, a prayer of dedication which would be uh, in the Lipscomb tradition but also I think would be uh, in uh, the Andrews tradition uh, I, I never will forget the moment when I was meeting with Nel Nelson and uh, so many of you were mentored so much longer than I was, but I will never forget the luncheon where uh, we didn't know each other all that well, but, but as we began to eat, he said, Randy, would you go ahead and offer a prayer for us? And uh, that was a new moment for me with him, and yet it was a moment that reflected, I think, a sense of spirituality uh, as well. Well, our mayor is certainly a representative of the civic leadership that uh, uh, Nelson and Sue have had in mind. Uh, he is one that doesn't need an introduction to this group. He has served uh, in an outstanding way for the last three years. Uh, and uh, I was thinking at home this morning uh, how difficult it is for a college president to be political. In fact, it's almost impossible. Uh, we have 36,000 alumni who live, well, half of them live in two counties in Tennessee. Davidson and Williamson County. And I made the mistake one time of putting a yard sign up. Oh, man. Uh, because all the people that didn't like that candidate just got furious at me. And I did some reading, and I realized college presidents rarely run for public office because they've had to be so neutral as a college president. So, so uh, Mr. Mayor, I know you're running for office, and, and I, I, I would like uh, to endorse you, but you realize I can't. Uh, uh, but, but here's what I decided I could say, and that is I just signed a five-year contract, uh, and I hope you're leading our city for every year that I'm president. How's that? Thank you, President Lowry, for that uh, introduction, and thank you for, I'll call it an endorsement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, lucky, uh, I was sitting there thinking I've been mayor for a while because uh, when they started talking about girl state and 594 young women, I'm thinking about sales tax. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> something's not right. Huh? It is always wonderful to be here at Lipscomb. Uh, President Lowry, this entire university have provided such strong, positive leadership for our community and have been uh, such a huge role, I think, in the success of the city 
um, over time and particularly in the last few years. Uh, Lipscomb is a very engaged partner with the larger national community and this is an appropriate place uh, for the center. I want to recognize and say thank you to all the members of the Lipscomb Board and Administration, um, all the members of the national community who are here to celebrate the dedication and honoring Nelson and Sue Andrews, and the members of the Institute's Leadership Council. I also want to offer a special recognition to Sue and Carter Andrews. Uh, Nelson was a very passionate and stalwart leader in our community. He sought visionary approaches at the same time always seeking to find common ground between people. He believed that everyone held a seat and a voice at the table and he was the first, uh, in my opinion, to always seek out the people who felt disenfranchised. Sue and Carter, thank you for your work to carry his memory and more importantly his legacy forward through this institute. I can think of no better place to reflect the passion and perspective of Nelson than Lipscomb University. And as a member of this Institute's Leadership Council, I look forward to participating in the dialogue and the discussions that seek to envision a better community. I believe, to the core of my being, and I often say this, that Nashville's best days are still ahead of it. And through the work of this Institute, I am more certain than ever that we, as one community, will continue to make Nashville one of the best places to live, work, and to raise a family. Thank you. We are really not here to uh, dedicate a facility, although we will be doing that, as much as we are to carry on the legacy, and to think about all the ways that uh, your support and your enthusiasm and your history uh, will allow that to happen. Uh, I'm so thrilled that uh, uh, Sue is here to uh, share with us some comments, and, and I'm thrilled with that in, in a couple of contexts. One is that she has been a steadfast in her support of our moving forward in this project, uh, but more than that, uh, there was a, a very critical moment, uh, and it would have been, I don't know how many months ago, Sue, where uh, after Nelson died, I didn't know exactly what to do or where to go. And uh, I shared uh, the progress we had made and the conversations we'd had, uh, the vision that he had uh, instilled in me. And it was a thrilling day when uh, Sue and Frank and Carter and others said, you know, we really want that to happen at Lipscomb. So would you please welcome the half of uh, the Andrews family that we can listen to today physically as we listen to Nelson in our minds. Would you welcome Sue Andrews? and violent, and he always was flummoxed that it just wasn't addressed in the academic circles. As was his way, he gently potted and poked the university friends to get them to see the light. And until Randy came along and enthusiastically responded to his challenge, Nelson was a leader with a great vision and no traction on the ground, none. Well, today, as you can see by all the civic leaders in the room, we've achieved really magnificent traction. We have this beautiful space. We have an amazing team tenaciously executing the vision. And we have all of you who are completely indispensable in the building of Nashville's wonderful tradition of civic leadership. To all of you who share this moment with our family today, please pull up alongside us, offer to teach a class, 
tell all of the leaders you know what a terrific opportunity this is for them to attend the Institute, shape to shape their dreams, and to bring them to fruition. As it is with all leadership, the vision part was the easiest part. The hard part is always the implementation. And Linda Shack, where are you, Linda? Way back there, has done an amazing job creating a powerful <laughs> curriculum, shepherding it through the academic records, and ensuring the focus stays on connecting with others, discovering what really matters, creating new solutions, and transforming our community. Randy, we can't thank you enough for your wonderful leadership. Members of the Leadership Council, thank you for your attending today and for committing to shepherd this institute along. Lanty Shack, you are an amazing leader. You have been completely relentless in creating a firm foundation to all of you at Lipscomb University. Thank you for answering Nelson's call. I assure you he is plum tickled <laughs> to know that his vision is in your hands. Let's uh, follow that uh, and those sweet comments uh, with uh, uh, a little bit more formal acknowledgement of uh, the person who has been the energy for the last number of months in putting all this together. Uh, she'll be sharing with the Leadership Council as they have a luncheon a little bit later. Uh, but would you uh, please acknowledge uh, the director of this institute who's putting together the inaugural class, the entire academic program, pulling contacts from all over the nation to make this work, Linda Peachak. Joining Linda this year is uh, Lydia Linker. Uh, Lydia, as you know, was the press secretary to Governor Bredesen for all eight years, right? And uh, I'd never gotten a call from the governor directly <coughs> until last December. And uh, he, he called and uh, uh, had said that uh, Lydia, I guess, had talked to Linda or something, and he wanted to endorse uh, our... Uh, now, how do you say no to that? Uh, he wanted to endorse uh, our looking at, at Lydia as uh, someone who could come and be a part of this. And that wasn't a real hard decision on our part, Lydia. You've worked very hard, and thank you so much for all you've done. And uh, let's cut a ribbon. Uh, we only have one shot at this. Uh, uh, so uh, let, let's cut a ribbon if you'll allow us the, the, the awkwardness but the fun of this moment. And then we'll ask George McGowan, who really is uh, uh, someone who's been a spiritual leader in this community for years and years. And uh, uh, someone that I got to know very early when I came to Lipscomb. Um, I got to know him because... Uh, we had one of our very early conversations of significance, and I naively, I guess, invited Christians and uh, Jewish and Muslim leaders and clergy to come to this campus to sit in the room just opposite of us here and to talk for a day about how uh, the monotheistic religions could be represented and be uh, in a community. And uh, the coverage that I received in the Tennessee and the next day uh, created a stir uh, that I didn't anticipate. Uh, it had all the Church of Christ people mad, but it had all the Baptists mad too. And, uh, <laughs> when you get the Church of Christ and the Baptists mad at you in Nashville, uh, you realize you may be sent to Redemption Island <laughs> many times. <laughs> and it was after that event that George McGowan probably not knowing me at all, uh, and perhaps knowing a different Lipscomb historically, a step forward to say, I was there, and those things were not the things that were said, and this was the purpose of the meeting, uh, and I realized that uh, God had sent an angel uh, to uh, be a part of this, and uh, that's how come I'm still here, George. So uh, th thank you a lot for that. So we'll ask him to lead us in a prayer of dedication. 
Uh, then we will quickly go cut another ribbon so we get the front door, and then we'll just allow you to enjoy that. When you go into the Institute, it is uh, remarkable. Uh, you know, we, we don't look at that alone as the facility. We look at this entire floor, and, and so we were thankful we didn't have to build a multi-million dollar space, but I think we put more money per square foot in the Andrews Institute than we put in any of the buildings we've built, which is about $45 million worth of building uh, the last five years. So per square foot, walk carefully. Uh, and uh, Enjoy the technology. Uh, and, and again, uh, we appreciate those who have contributed to the Institute, but we've not asked you to yet. Uh, because we want to get the why done, and then we'll uh, endow this, uh, I hope. Uh, but the university feels so strongly that it uh, wanted to make this investment. So, with that said, could I invite the mayor, and could I invite Sue, and I think Carter, Frank, who else is coming up? Have you figured that out? Um, and there's not a lot that happens verbally while we do this, so just hang in there, and uh, we'll see if we can get this done. Uh, who gets the big scissors? Mom. Sue. We have to do this at the same time, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, it really looks bad. Okay? <laughs> So uh, as we open the Andrews Institute on this historic day, uh, thinking about the vision, but thinking really about the future, let's cut this up. Go. Join me in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we join our hearts together on this glad day to give thanks for the life of our dear friend and civic leader, Nelson Andrews, and for his dear wife, Sue. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for the model that they have set, not only as a married couple who love each other deeply, but as a couple who love this city deeply as well. We thank you, Father, for the wisdom with which you've endowed them. We thank you for the meek and gentle spirit that he manifested throughout the course of his life. We thank you, Father, for his vision that our city be a good city, that it be a pleasant place, that it be a place that would be marked with not only prosperity, but service and kindness and gentleness. A place where there's fairness and justice, where there's compassion. Uh, Father, where there's uh, an eagerness to engage the future instead of dwelling in the past. And so our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the way you've arranged for the legacy of Sue and Nelson Andrews to continue through this institute. We thank you for Dr. Lowry. We thank you for Linda Schatt. We thank you for Lydia Linker. And we thank you, Father, for the first class of students that have already been raised up and committed uh, to receive the training. And our desire is that this institute would continue to feed not only this city, but cities across our nation and around the world with good, high quality, civic leaders, leaders who would bring glory and honor to you that would, would uh, cause joy to come to your heart. And so now, Father, with, with united hearts and with a sense of optimism and enthusiasm, we dedicate this institute to you, to your glory, with the prayer that you would pour out your blessing upon the institute, all of her leaders and all of her students, and that uh, great glory and honor would come to your name, and great blessing would come to our culture, to our city, and to the cities of the world out of this institute's ministry. 
So accept our prayer, Father, of thanksgiving and praise and adoration and our deep desire that this institute honor and magnify your name. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs>